So who exactly is Google Stadia for? Let's talk about it. <laughs> What's up, growing up gamers? Uh, we got an article here. We just want to uh, give our opinions on this is actually coming from Forbes and this was uh, released last week But we still just wanted to share our thoughts about it. And this is mostly about Google Stadia So you read the article as well. What are your general thoughts before we get really into the nitty-gritty? I strongly agree with the writer of this article because originally it mentions how originally everyone really thought that Stadia was Netflix video games. Yeah. And it's kind of how we all took it, and really it's not. And now I'm kind of confused on why it's a thing and where they think it's going to go. Yeah, so this is a Forbes article written by Paul Tassi. I hope you said, I, I hope I said your name right. Paul Tassi? Tassi? I would uh, say Tassi. Paul Tassi. So he writes about this Reddit AMA that Stadia was on. And everybody was assuming that Stadia is going to be the Netflix of gaming, much like um, Game Pass. And we just actually just did a podcast about subscription game services, which I will link right here, I believe it's going to be. Yeah, so it was a little bit confusing of who this is for. But then this Reddit AMA comes out. And uh, here's the first quote. This is coming from Andre ooh, Doran. Doran. Doronechev. 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 Yeah, yeah, that. Andre Doronechev. Whatever. Um, <laughs> that guy. So, he says this. To be clear, Stadia Pro is not Netflix for games. Like some people have mentioned, a closer comparison would be like Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus. Pro subscribers get 4K HDR. 5.1 sound, exclusive discounts, access to some free games, roughly one free game per month, give or take, starting with Destiny 2. Yay! So we're going to talk about what Paul Tassi thinks about all this, but let's start with our own thoughts here. I'm a little bit more confused about what Stadia actually is, per se. Now, when it says that it's not going to be like the Netflix, much like Game Pass, it's, it's going to be like Xbox Live, mm -hmm. which I don't really agree that it's like that just because Google Stadia is you, you pay $10 a month and you get access to the store. I believe there's a free version. So I'm trying to look up the prices right now online. Right now, all I can find is Stadia Pro which is the $10 a month to get access to the Stadia library, which they have a Stadia library, and yet it's not the Netflix of gaming. Yeah. So you pay $10 a month basically for Netflix, and you get a library of movies and TV shows, but here, it's not going to be that. Yeah, it seems like they don't... It seems like... They don't even know what they did, what they're doing. Right. Like, that they don't. They're not even sure what it is because the way they describe it, it sounds like Netflix for gaming. But I, the way that it sounds like in this new article, with um, you know, the interviews that he's putting out, it seems like like you pay ten dollars a month, but then you just to have the base, and then yeah. you still have to pay for all the games, and that makes no sense to me. Why would you pay ten dollars a month and buy and mm -hmm. still just to buy games? And then Paul Tassi goes into, he's like, so I have to rebuy all the games I already own? Yeah. And, and that's just it. The, the difference between Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus is that you get $10 to access the multiplayer. And then you also have discounts and all this stuff. Yeah. But the the difference is, is that Xbox Live and PlayStation Plus, you do not have to purchase those uh, services. Yeah, you don't you have, have to purchase Gold or PlayStation yeah. Plus. To access PlayStation networks. Yeah. Well, to access your PlayStation. But yeah. you need to purchase Stadia Pro to access Stadia. Yeah. Which is bizarre to me. I don't really agree with what he's saying. But at the same time, I don't work for Google Stadia. So I don't know exactly what's going into this. The person who is designing Google Stadia will know what Google Stadia actually is. But at the same time, if you're the person making Google Stadia... Shouldn't you know how to explain what it is so mm -hmm. that we understand? Because clearly everyone is confused as to what Stadia actually is going to be. Right. And that's where Paul Tassi comes in. And he says that a lot of us were thinking that 
Google Stadia is going to be like that Uplay Plus or Game Pass, but it's not. He has this to say. But Google Stadia is not that. Slowly building up a tiny free art arsenal of titles, one at a time, the draw is that you don't need a console hardware, but Stadia controller is 25% the cost of a controller itself. Now, the controller is actually going to be $70. So $70 for a controller, but you need the... Well, here's the other thing. You don't need the controller to access Google Stadia. I think that's where Paul Tassi is kind of confused here. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the original statement was that you don't need the controller to play Stadia. It was that it's an option. But the right. problem is, who would take the option of a $70 controller mm -hmm. when didn't they also say that you can use your controllers from your other systems? Yeah, you can use so, your Xbox and your PlayStation controller. So why would I spend $70 mm -hmm. on a Stadia controller when I could spend $40 and buy a new PlayStation controller or right. just use my free, now free PlayStation controller. Exactly. You well, know, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand their business idea behind that. I mean, they're Google mm -hmm. and I know they know what they're doing. But right. at the same time, $70 for a controller. Yeah. Well, that's about the price. For a computer? Yeah. Well, that's about the price of, um, of a Joy-Con too. So I believe they're $70 if I'm remembering correctly. But let's continue with this uh, quote here. And you need to purchase all other games on the service individually, removing this as far from Netflix-like as it could possibly be. Despite being centered around streaming, Stadia is not a streaming service in a traditional sense. It's more like an online storefront that sells games that rely on streaming instead of digital downloads. It sounds like Amazon Video Store minus the hundreds of free Amazon Prime movies and shows. And I, and I kind of agree with him there, yeah. where you need to repurchase all the games you already own. So I'm looking through what Stadia offers. Mm -hmm. So again, this is coming from Stadia's, um, Stadia's announcement. And you're going to get access to a couple different game titles. So some of the games you're going to have to buy on Google Stadia. Now, I believe this has been announced that it's going to be on Google Stadia's library, but they're not like Netflix and not like Game Pass. They're but not free. You have to buy them to right. stream. And it's just a little weird because they at first they said that this is going to be you buy Google Stadia Pro and you have access to a library of games, including uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But some of the games you can purchase is uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, of course. Uh, the Crew 2, Elder Scrolls Online, which, oh, I did not know that you could play Elder Scrolls Online on Stadia. That's pretty cool. Ghost Recon Breakpoint, NBA 2K, Rage 2, Tomb Raider Trilogy, Wolfenstein Youngblood. To me, with the streaming service, there's nothing really appealing to Google Stadia's Pro because if, if I'm going to buy those games anyway, mm -hmm. I'd rather not stream those games right I, I'd, I'd rather just play it on my console yeah you know what i'm saying i feel like the way they're going with this is that they're trying to do something in the sense of like yeah you already own it on your xbox but you take your laptop with you on vacation all the time right now you can have your games with you because that's kind of where paul tassi was taking it was like yeah you can take it on the go you can have your games with you yeah but at the same time is it worth it because, like, when you go on vacation, it's usually not amazing Wi-Fi and right. streaming. And, you know, you don't know what that's going to be like. And to spend $60, that's like if we bought, you know, we bought, we have an Xbox and a PlayStation. That would be as if we were buying a, you know, Assassin's Creed for the Xbox and then Assassin's Creed again for the PlayStation. Right. You know what I mean? Like, to me, that's the same thing. So, to me, it makes no sense. Yeah. To own the same game on different mm. consoles just so you can play it on vacation to bring your Xbox. And that's the other thing. You, you brought up while you're on vacation, you don't have that great of an internet. And at the same time, we have this PC Gamer article that also states that Stadia 4K streaming will use up a terabyte of data in 65 hours. Uh, and that's the other part is that who knows what your bandwidth is. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to play these games, I don't want to use up my bandwidth playing these games. Now, that brings us to our point and also Paul Tassi's point of just all of this is just very confusing of where they want to go with this and what their identity is and what their what their niche is. It brings it to the point of who is this really for? Honestly, yeah. Paul Tassi has this to say. 
All of this leads me to a point where I've been making for a while now that I have no idea who Google Stadia is supposed to be for. As a hardcore gamer, I would have considered getting Stadia to play some third-party games I like on the go. But knowing that this is going to be part of a paltry list of free games, I'm going to have to rebuy them all for Stadia if I want to do that. Suddenly that becomes far less appealing. Even Destiny 2, where I'm a super fan, I'd still have to rebuy most of the DLC to stay current. And I'm already going to be doing that on PC once Cross Save is out. So that's not appealing either. And I have to feel for him there, where it's just kind of like, if I'm going to play it on PC anyway, why would I pay it in the same way? Yeah. Um, yeah, especially for a PC. Like, that's even crazier. Like, it's already on your PC. Yeah. If you're a PC gamer, I don't see why you would even think about getting Stadia, because there you go. You're if, Especially if you game on your laptop, like, mm-hmm. there you go. Your game is already portable. And it's not streaming. Yeah, and it's just strange to think about. Now, I'm not trying, we're not trying to make this video to hate on Stadia. It just seems to be getting more and more confusing as time goes on. Right. You know, so it's still trying to feel out and figure out what exactly Stadia is and is it worth it? Yeah. Like, we still don't know after a few months of knowing its existence. Mm hmm. So, yeah. And the other part is, and he brings up this point as well, well, then is it for the casual players? And he said, I heard that the argument stated is for non-gamers or casual gamers, but then he has this to say, and I completely agree with mm -hmm. him. He says, wrong. And this badly misunderstands the casual mobile market. If you're a mobile gamer, you are going to hate both paying full price, usually $60 for games, and if you opt for a higher price streaming tier, a $120 a year subscription, that does not sound like anything a mobile gamer will be interested in. Hardware or no? Additionally, there is a huge leap that most people seem to forget about between mobile style games and something that requires a controller to play. Often the barrier is not the cost of the hardware, but the hardware itself. And here's where I pretty much agree. Oh yeah. My mom might be a world-ranked Candy Crush player, but a dual-stick controller in her hand, and she won't know up from down. Literally, she usually ends up staring at the sky, spinning in circles. I feel that. Yeah, and, <laughs> and my mom, like, she loves Candy Crush. Yes. And that's how she really does her gaming most of the time, is just through yeah. mobile games like that. So if it's not for the the hardcore gamers, the grown-up gamers. Hi, how you doing? Subscribe. But if it's not for us, then it's for the mobile gamers. But then I'm thinking about my mom and I just don't see her doing this at all, especially it's, once her internet bill comes up. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. But not even that. It's like, usually when you're playing on your phone, mm -hmm. it's because it's, oh, it's right there. Hey, I'm just gonna, it's a commercial. I pick up my phone and I play around a Candy Crush. Right. Not, oh, I want to play a game. Yeah. I'm going to open up my laptop, boot up Stadia, and mm -hmm. download a game to start streaming. Right. But, like, that's a thing. Like, mobile gamers, it's because it's mobile. It's right there in their phone, in their pocket. Yeah. They can play it during a commercial. They can play it when they're waiting at the doctor's office. They can play it other places. Like, really, something that you need to open up a laptop for and turn on and everything mm -hmm. is not for mobile gamers. If you want something for mobile gamers, you need something that's handheld yeah like the switch light is a better idea for mm -hmm. mobile gamers than stadia that needs a pc to do it well it's not just needs a pc but you can do it anywhere your phone your tv uh it, it, the whole aspect is that you stream it on all your devices yeah but then when stadia first comes out it's only going to be launching on google phones everybody's shocked about that but it's it's, it's launch google. yeah, yeah. It, on launch it's going to work on Google products. Surprise, yeah. surprise. But this brings us to what we think about all this. And again, I'm not hating on Google Stadia. How can you hate on something that you haven't even held? That we don't even know what it is, really. Exactly. It hasn't released. No one has their hands on it, really. No one in the mainstream has their hands on it. So there's really no serious opinions about this. It's all just very, very confusing about who you're marketing to. Like I say in all these commentary videos, I bring it back to this very YouTube channel where if we were to just say, hey, we're a gaming channel, 
about what? And it's just very confusing. Like, oh, we do Gears 5 testing. Um, well, I'm not doing a test stream or anything like that. Uh, oh, we're doing Gears 5 stuff, but we're also talking to developers, but we're also mobile gamers, but we're also... And it's just like, there's no niche there. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to narrow down our niche so that when you come to this channel, you know exactly what you're getting. And that's where Google Stadia comes in, where who is this actually for? Is it for the hardcore game? I, I hate using that term, by the way. Yeah. Uh, is it for the... Serious gamers. Yeah. Is it for the elite gamers? Is it for the veteran gamers? Is it for mobile gamers? Who is Google Stadia actually for? And then you you pretty much branch out to nobody. Really awesome piece of advice for growing YouTube that I've seen from Think Media. Sean Cannell, he always says, when you try to reach everybody, you end up reaching nobody. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if you try to reach everybody, all sorts of different types of gamers, you're not going to appeal yeah. to any of the gamers because there's no really one specific type of gamer that is interested in this. Yeah. Yeah. And to go off that, it's more of, it's not even that you can't reach everyone. It's mm -hmm. that people like to feel like they're in a community, like they're with people that are like them. Yeah. And when you have something like this that you do try and reach everyone, mm -hmm. that's why it doesn't reach everyone because people want to feel in, like, oh, these are people just like me. And whereas with this, it seems like, oh, there's like people who are more casual than me. There's people who are more serious than me. Like, yeah. and that's not what people want. They want something that's like, oh, I belong here. Right. You know? And even further so, like you said, you don't really have an opinion on Stadia. It's hard to like judge that. And I'm in the same boat. I don't want to judge this trail and be like, oh, this is going to be terrible. I think right. they're still trying to figure out what it, what exactly they want to do. Mm -hmm. But so far, my opinion is lessening. Like yeah. it seems like they're going downhill. It doesn't seem to be going in the right direction. I'm not making my final judgment. But in my opinion, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere good at the moment. Yeah, and that's really just my opinion about all of this. It's just, I don't know where it's going, but I still have hope for it just because it, it hasn't even launched yet. We don't even know. It's going to have a rough launch. It's going to have oh, yeah. a rough launch. Yeah. And it's still trying to figure itself out. But five years down the road, you're going to see Google Stadia just growing and growing and growing. It's going to find its identity. It's going to find its niche crowd, and that niche crowd is going to go to it. But for right now... Everyone's just kind of confused. I feel like Google's kind of confused yeah. about what they want to do. But I'm still hopeful for the future of Stadia where it's just saying that, listen, this is who we are. This is who we're marketing to. And five years down the road, it's going to market to that. I don't see myself and Liz, I don't think you see yourself no. being a Stadia player. But then again, uh, like I said on the podcast, I didn't see myself as being a Game Pass subscriber ever. And now I, I don't imagine ever getting rid of Game Pass. No. So right now, I don't see myself or yourself uh, taking Stadia seriously. Yeah. But we don't know what this is going to be years down the road and once it's finally found out what it actually is. So I still have hope for Stadia. I don't know about you. Yeah, I, I have hope. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. But I do agree with Mr. Paul Tassi here that uh, it's just confusing of who they are marketing towards and that's what makes it less hopeful for myself but i know a lot of you or who are watching uh you've already pre-purchased the the google stadia because a lot of people already have and that's fine mm -hmm. let us know in the comments what your thoughts about uh google stadia is so we'll just end it there but like i said like i just said right now Comment down below about what your thoughts are for Google Stadia. Do you agree with Paul Tassi? Do you not agree? Do you not agree with us? Let us know your thoughts. Let's just have a discussion down in the comments below. I'll be there. Liz will probably be there. So let's have a discussion. So don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to the channel so you can get more videos just like this. And don't forget to share it with your friends so that they can find us too. Thanks for watching and have a good day. See you next time.